Hello and welcome back to SAS Bootcamp week four, video three. In this video, we are going to use arrays and we're going to actually build a much bigger array to, to uh, build something that we in, in health outcomes research usually call it a possession array. Before I explain what that is, let me show you what our data set looks like. For this exercise, we will be using the rx underscore claims data set. This data set is a fake data set again, but it is built to look very similar to what you would expect a prescription claims data set to look like that is being uh, captured at a pharmacy or a community pharmacy, if you will. In this data set, there are 82 different rows. Uh, for each single row is basically a single prescription filled at a pharmacy. So for Benny ID 1, for example, on 19th of February 2017, they filled a prescription at the pharmacy for a 30 day supply of whatever medication that they were getting. Uh, on Benny ID, the same Benny ID 1 went back to the pharmacy on 19th March 2017, got another 30 day supply of their medication, and then went back on 23rd April, on June 1st, and then 25th June, each time for a 30 day supply of their medication, so on and so forth. Uh, I've used 30 day supply for basically every single row in this data set but usually there is a good bit of variability there. You will also find that in this data set, uh, each individual has gone back to the pharmacy a different number of times. Right? Individual one went to the pharmacy five times, individual two went to the pharmacy three times, uh, individual four went a bunch of times, individual three, so on and so forth. Um, so, so we need to use all of this data to build a possession array. The idea of the possession array is to, give us a, is to give us an idea about whether an individual had medication on hand for each day of the period that we are interested in. So the goal of our exercise in this video is to build a possession array for the first quarter of 2017. Okay. Uh, you will see that the prescription claims here happen any time in the first seven months of 2017 that's because we also had eligibility information that we looked at in the previous video for the first seven months of 2017. Even though we have seven months of prescription claims, we only want to build a possession area for the first quarter, which is 90 days of 2017. Uh, so let me first, before we build the possession area, the first thing we want to do is we want to actually delete any prescription that were filled outside of the first quarter of 2017. So I'm going to say claims Q1. Is my name of the new data set. I'm going to set it into a. So I'm going to set my rx underscore claims file, and I want to make sure that I we only use prescriptions that were filled before 31st March 2017, which is my which is the end of my first quarter of 2017. This will delete a bunch of rows. Let's see if this works. Uh, we went down from 82 rows to only 40 rows in this data set, which is fine. I want to make sure everything happens before 31st March. You know, there is one prescription that happened on 31st March. Okay, so I, I think we've got what we need. Uh, you'll see that Benny ID 1 actually now has just two prescriptions in the first quarter. The other three other prescriptions actually happened after the first quarter, so we deleted those. We don't want those. Excuse me. Next, what we want to do is we want to build the actual possession array itself. So what we want to do now is we want to say, build one variable for each of the 90 days in the first quarter. So each of those 90 days should have a different variable in my data set. And each variable should have a one if the individual had medication that day, or it should have a zero if the individual did not have a medication that day. So let me, Go ahead and start with another data set. Um, I'm going to call my new data set POSS underscore AR. I'm going to set my Q1 claims variable. And the first thing I want to do is I want to define an array statement for this 90 day possession array I'm talking about. Now remember, there are no such variables in the data set right now. So if I were to open the data set I just created, claims underscore Q1 you'll see there are only three columns in this data set, right? There is a Benny ID column, a fill date, and a day supply. There's no more columns, but I want to create these 90 columns. And the way to do that is to simply define it in the array. By, by defining this array with 90 variables that previously did not exist, I'm not only defining them, I'm also creating those variables. 
So we will now have an array. Uh, I'm going to call my array POSS for possession. Uh, it will have 90 variables. That's the number within the parentheses. And then the, vari the variables that you need to be included in that array POSS are POSS underscore one all the way to POSS underscore 90. Right? And these variables don't exist in the data set now, but they will be created as a result of this array definition statement. So once we've done this, let me, we can go ahead and look at the data set and make sure that they've been created. Excuse me. Uh, alphabetic prefixes are very different for enumerated variables. Oh, I see what happened. Uh, this is a good way to show this. Uh, my array, my error statement is basically saying my prefix was not the same. So I forgot this underscore here. And, and the prefix, which was POSS underscore one, POSS underscore was not the same from the first variable to the last variable. So SAS didn't know how to create 90 variables in that set. Now I added that underscore back in, and this worked just fine. So now if I look at my data set, I now have on top of these three columns, I now have 90 additional columns that I just created. Um, let me see. SAS is not letting me scroll all the way through, but you can look here that I've created 90 different variables. With one line of code, I created 90 of them. Now they are all missing, which we need to fix that, but I do have 90 variables now, one for each day of 2017's first quarter. Next, we need to start populating these arrays based on when individuals actually filled prescriptions. So what I want to do is I want to say January 1st is day one, which is POSS underscore, which is the variable POSS underscore one. Let me open that data set. So if an individual filled a prescription on January 1st, right? If they have a prescription on January 1st, then I want POSS underscore one to be set to the value one and not miss it. If they had a prescription on January 2nd, because, because a prescription on January 1st, a 30 day prescription on January 1st, would last until January 31st, right? So then I want once from POSS1 to POSS2 to POSS3 to POSS4 all the way up to POSS30. And then if they had another prescription, then I want once again in the next columns. So, so each variable corresponds to a certain date. But you will see that the variable names and their positions in the array are not the same numbers as the dates themselves. So I first thing I need to do if I want to build a possession array so I need to translate these two languages. So let me try, write this code up and then you will see what, I'm, what I mean by this. So first thing I want to do is I want to translate the date the prescription was filled. So I want to say first underscore day equals fill date, which is the variable in my data set, minus 01 January 2017 D plus one. Okay, and then last day, equals fill date plus day supply. So what I'm doing here is I'm basically converting fill date, which is a date variable, into a, into a numeric variable going from one through 90 to tell me which day of my 90 day possession array I'm actually thinking about. So let me run this and we can look at that data set also. We can look at that variable also, and then we can see if it makes sense. I'm going to comment out my array statement because I don't want to be looking through 90 different columns uh, just to get at that first underscore day variable. Okay, so you'll see here what this is doing now is this is translating the 19th February 2017 variable to a number between 0 and 90, which is the language of my array, if you will, right? Because my array has position numbers for each variable, for each of those 90 variables. So 19th February is the 50th day in the first quarter of 2017, which corresponds to the 50th position of my 90 day possession array. So 15th January, for example, is the 15th day, right? So we want to translate in from this language, which is looking at dates, right? We were, which is looking at dates and we want to translate it into the first day variable, which is basically a number that goes from one to 90 because we want to use this first day variable in my array counter as opposed to the fill date. Using the fill date in the array counter doesn't make a lot of sense, so we have to do this translation before we can build a possession array. Now, while doing this translation, 
the simplest way the simplest way to do this translation basically is to take your fill date subtract the first date possible in the data set that we are looking at which is the first date possible is 1st of january 2017 and then you want to add the value 1 to it because 1st january minus 1st january would be 31st december 2016 and we don't want that right we want the first day to be 1 so 1st january should be 1 2nd january should be 2 so on and so forth until 31st march 2017 is 90 so so we want to add plus 1 right after we've subtracted these two things now the last day variable is basically telling me that if an individual filled a prescription today, how long do they have that prescription for? If somebody is taking their prescriptions one for every single day, their 30 day prescription supply should last the fill date plus 30 days, right? I have a typo here, I just saw that. Um, fill date plus 30 days. So let me go ahead and run this again because I realized that my previous data set did not look right. Log looks fine, output data. Okay, so now um, I, I, I think I made another error. But what I need to do here is I need to write first underscore day, excuse me. Oh, I still have an error. Let me check my log. Must be doing something wrong. I don't think it's, oh, I've got another typo. Typos today. Okay, log looks fine. Output. All right, so we we'll, let's look at this row, right? So 15 January 2017 is the 15th day in the quarter of the first quarter of 2017. And if somebody filled their prescription on that day for 30 days, then their prescription will last until the 45th day of this quarter. So first day is 15, 45th day is, so first day of the prescription is 15, last day of the prescription is 45. And I'm going to now use these two variables to tell me which of my 90 variables in my 90 day possession array needs to be populated with a one as opposed to a zero, right? So let's go ahead and write that code. And there are a couple of different ways to do this too. Let's first use the straightforward way. So I'll write a possession, I'll write a do loop that goes through 90 different variables. So I'll say do i equals one to 90, end statement. Um, and then I will say if, If I, the counter variable, is greater than or equal to first underscore day, and I is less than or equal to last underscore day, then POSS I should be equal to one. It's POSS I equal to zero. So what this is saying is that run this loop 90 different times for each row in this data set run 90 loops and for each loop you will have a counter variable which goes from 1 through 90 and you will check to see if that counter variable is greater than the first date which is the variable we created based on the fill date translated into a number from 1 to 90 right so if i is greater than first day and if i is less than last day then the possession i which means the go back to that 90 day array and then pull the variable based on the position of this counter variable value and then set that variable to be equal to a one. And if it is not, if this condition is not met, if i is not greater than first day or less than last day, then just set it to zero. So let's run this, look at what our data set looks like and see if this makes sense. So let me use, um, let me use this example right here. So this particular person filled their prescription on 4th January 2017 for 30 days. So for them, remember POSS1, which is actually January 1st, should be zero. Right? They didn't have a prescription on 1st January. On 2nd January, they still didn't have a prescription. 3rd January, they did not have a prescription. On 4th January, they did have a prescription, right? So POSS4 is now a one. On 5th, they did because that was a 30-day prescription. It lasts from January 4th 
to whatever 30 days after January 4th is, which I think should be 3rd of February, right? But it should be the day 34, right? So they will continue to have ones from POSS underscore four to POSS 34, which if I can add those columns in here to show you guys. SAS Studio does not let you look at every single column at once because the, the browser can get overwhelmed if you do that. Um, here, row number 16. Uh, so we had zeros up until POSS 3. POSS 4, we start having these ones and they go all the way up to POSS 34. POSS 35 is back to a zero. And the reason that is working is because we took the date the prescription was filled, the fill date variable, and we converted it first to a 1 through 90 language. We translated it using this simple formula where we subtracted the date the prescription was filled from the first date of the year. And then we added 1 to make the numbering correct. And then we created a last day variable based on how long they had that prescription. So we added 30 to it. And then as long as the counter variable of our do loop, which goes from 1 to 90, happens to be between the first day and the last day, we change the possession, we change the POSS underscore whatever corresponding variable was from that array to a one, right? So this counter variable value here tells you what position in that array you need to refer to and then change that value to a one. So we've basically now with very few lines of code created 90 days of uh, created a 90 day possession array where for each day we can look at the values of zero and one to know if an individual had a prescription or if they did not have a prescription. Now when creating a possession array you need to be careful about a couple of different things. The first one is that uh, some people if you're looking at a 90 day period that you're building a possession array for some people may have gotten a prescription on the very last day on the 90th day or maybe they got a prescription in the last 10 days, maybe they got a prescription on the 80th or the 85th day, and that we're actually going to, that's actually a 30 day prescription. So maybe their prescription lasts well beyond that 90 day period. So if that is happening, you want to make sure you cut your last day off to within that 90 day period. So I will write an ex extra line of code here where I'll say if last day is greater than 90 because they got their prescription on the 80th day and it was for 30 days. So that prescription actually lasts the 110th day, then I just want to change that variable and set it to a 90 to avoid confusions. Now, if you did not do this, the code will still work just fine because our do loop is only going from one to 90. The do loop isn't even going to 91, 92, 93 or any of those other numbers. But setting this last day variable to 90 as the maximum and, and doing it so that no individual can have prescriptions beyond the 90th day is basically a way to be safe and to be certain that your code is not looking at any prescriptions beyond the 90th day. So whenever I do this, I want to write a piece of comment explaining uh, what I'm doing. And, and this line of code will simply let you build that possession array. Why are we interested in building possession arrays? Possession arrays are a really, really useful tool within health outcomes research when working with prescription claims data because we want to often understand how adherent an individual is to their medication, right? If an individual is taking medication, we want to make sure that they have medication on hand in order to be able to take it every single day. And being adherent to medication is how medication works, right? Um, and checking if they have medication on hand or not, using possession arrays and using this thing that we call proportion of days covered or PDC is a really, really important way to accomplish that. So what I've basically shown you is the first step in building a PDC or checking medication adherence for a certain individual. Um, before I wrap this video up, I want to demonstrate that there is actually another way to build this possession array, right? Instead of doing I equals one to 90, I can actually do a different do loop where I can say do I equals first underscore day, last underscore day. And within this loop, I can just say POSS I equals one. So here what I'm doing is I'm actually building a do loop that only goes from whatever the first day variable is to the last day variable. 
because when you're writing a do loop that counter variable can go from hard numbers like 1 to 90 for every single row but if you don't want to run 90 loops for every single row one way to save processing time is to tell that do loop how many loops to run based on other variables that are already in your data set and we already have a first day and a last day variable in the data set so then why run the loop 90 different times for every single row let's just run it for as many days that they have the prescription for which is most prescriptions are 30 days in our data set so this is 30 loops and as long as you're doing first day to last day we don't need this if condition that checks to see if the counter variable falls within the range of the dates of the prescription because the loop itself runs only for the dates of the prescription. So this is another way to accomplish the same exact thing. Create the possession array. Create the possession array with 90 different variables. Excuse me. There you see. So here we have ones. We don't have zeros here because I did not include a else statement which sets them to zeros, right? So because we don't have an else statement, the other values are all missing, but we still have ones wherever an individual had medication on hand, which is exactly as we expect. So either code is acceptable. It, it, you, which one you want to use comes down to your preference of do you want zeros or ones in the code? Uh, and really, if you want zeros in the code, you can do that within this piece of code as well. So that should not be a problem. But that is how you use arrays with do loops to build a possession array. 